I've spoken to a thousand plus Amazon sellers over the last year. And the main reason some of them weren't growing was that they weren't implementing the right strategies. It's usually never the economy. It's never the competition. It's never some other third party factor that's outside of their control. It's almost always that they're not focusing on the right things and they're not executing on the right things. So what I've done is I've gathered all the strategies that have worked for me and for the eight and nine figure sellers that we've worked with, I've put them all for free on a PowerPoint presentation, which I'll leave in the description of this video. And I'll share it right now and explain everything and how to implement it into your own account. Okay, so I'm about to take you through my complete blueprint for increasing your Amazon sales. I'm gonna cover the metrics that we'll work on, the different strategies that we're gonna use and how to implement each of them into your own account and what type of results you can expect so that you know what tests to prioritize first and how to start implementing things and in what order. So the very first thing that we need to cover are the actual metrics that lead to increased sales. So you have three metrics that you want to focus on. Your sessions, which is in other words, just the number of people going to your product listings. Your average order value, which is how much the average person spends when they check out. Um, then your unit session percentage, which is the percentage of sessions that convert into orders. Right? Any growth that happens in your account will be a result of an improvement in one of these three metrics. There's no other way to grow on Amazon. So when you actually know these metrics, you also have to know what products you're going to focus on because you can't improve sessions for every single ASIN in your account unless you're running like a one or two ASIN business. Usually most sellers I work with have a few dozen SKUs, right? maybe even a few hundred or a few thousand depending on the size of the seller and how long they've been around. But generally... If you're of a certain size, you are going to have to prioritize. And generally, that's just the best approach, even if you only have a few ASINs. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to pick out the ASINs that if you can improve like 10%, 20%, 30%, will have a pretty big or a pretty significant improvement for the entire account. So what I look for is something I call asymmetric ASINs. So asymmetric ASINs are ASINs that contribute a larger percentage of total sales and they do total budget. So something that spends 20% of your ad spend, but contributes like 40% or 30% of total sales. These ASINs are very ad efficient. They produce a large number of dollars per, um, per like ad dollar invested. And at the same time, there's more alpha in them. And alpha is like the percentage of extra return you can get on this ASIN compared to the other ASINs you have. So if you have an ASIN with a very good ad efficiency or a very good tackles, in other words, you can probably get a higher alpha by turning a 5% tackles ASIN to a 15% ASIN, 15% tackles ASIN, than by trying to convert the 15% tackles ASIN to 20% tackles ASIN and seeing how that affects your sales. So I kind of look for low tackles ASINs if they are available. If not, you generally just want to look for good reviews, good sales history, look at your top 10 20, 30, 40, 50, depending on the size of your account, ASINs by sales. Try to look at the ASINs that contribute 80% of sales combined. Um, look for ASINs with a large market and large search volume. If your ASIN doesn't like have the market size to scale, then there's not much you can do about that. You can't increase demand on Amazon. You can only capture demand. So generally look for ASINs that have good search volume. I try to go to the top search terms report in brand analytics type my main keyword and see how high it ranks. I try to look for things in the top 10,000 uh, in terms of search frequency rank. That's usually a good sign. Then look for things with good ad performance. If something's currently at the 40, 50% ACoS and that's not gonna work for you, then if you scale it up, your ACoS will tend to be worse. So you want to look for things that have like a good margin in there. Like if your target is a 30% ACoS and you go after like a 20% ACoS ASIN to grow, then you kind of have a 10% margin. To kind of increase your bids or add new keywords or just focus on exact match or whatever else it is so i'm going to run you through these metrics now one by one and kind of explain how we've been able to increase each one or just improve them in general the first one is sessions so i'll take you through a few methods that we've used to increase sessions the first one is pretty simple as target expansion and i kind of pulled up a before and after a screenshot to illustrate this so this was an account that we've worked on um in the first screenshot they had much less targets you know i'm talking everything like much less keywords much less like asins they had less match types so they weren't advertising every single target and all three match types and we fixed that for them and we had added like several thousand keywords in and if you look at the actual stats sales almost tripled from 69,000 to 181,000. spend more than doubled and clicks more than doubled as well we went from 21,000 to 44,000. 
and this was mainly through target expansion. So what we actually did was we utilized a few different reports and tools to get new keywords. The first one is the search query performance report. Uh, we just found out what our top performing search terms are according to Amazon and how well we were performing on them compared to the rest of the market in terms of like conversion rate compared to click share. And whenever we found that we had a conversion um, benefit, we kind of pushed harder on that keyword, especially if our current click share was low. So we either like set up like more ad types for that keyword. So if you only had something in sponsored product manual keyword targeting, we could target it again in like sponsored brand. Uh, we'd increase bids worth. We just tried to increase spend on those keywords where we had like an unfair advantage. That was the first method. The second method was using reverse ASIN lookup tools like Cerebro. Uh, we essentially take a bunch of our competitors' ASINs, throw them onto something like Cerebro, and Cerebro would show us the search terms that they index for. So we throw on like four, five, six ASINs on there. We've got the list of search terms that they show up for. And once we had that list, we'd filter through them. So if you throw on like five ASINs for a normal product that has average search volume, you'd usually get around 7,000 like search terms back. Um, so you generally, we put a few filters on there. So the first thing we'd filter for was um, where that product was actually ranked for that search term. Because if something's ranked like number 200, that's not that strong of a signal. Whereas if something's ranking top 30, for example, then there's a decent chance that it will be relevant. So we filtered for anything that's at uh, least top 30. Um, then when we had the remaining list, we just went through it one by one, searched them all on Amazon and made sure that what we were seeing in the SERP was similar to what we were selling, which proves that the user intent behind that search term is to buy something that is similar to what we're selling. So we just like did a manual search on every single keyword, picked them out, found a few hundred keywords out of this and started putting them in campaigns for each ASIN. That was the second method used. The third method is harvesting. This one is the lowest effort method and you can actually automate it through our tool, AI Hello. So what you can do here is you can pretty much just connect your auto campaigns to your manual campaigns automatically and use Amazon's own keyword research algorithms um, that you know happen automatically in your auto campaigns to find search terms for your manual campaign. So what can happen is Amazon shows your product on like 600, 700 search terms through auto. 50 of those end up converting. Then those 50 are duplicated automatically in exact broad and phrase into your keyword targeting campaigns. And we also have transfer for ASINs. So you can dictate how many sales something would need to be transferred and the campaigns you want them to be transferred for. And over time, this will add hundreds of keywords into your campaigns for every ASIN. And it's completely automated. So this is something that helped out a lot. Um, another thing that we did to increase sessions was to increase CTR. So your CTR is the percentage of impressions that turn into clicks. Uh, so if you just look at the math that I've done here, if you got a million impressions at a 0.2 CTR, you'd get 2,000 clicks. Whereas if you got the same impressions at a 0.5% CTR, you'd get 5,000 clicks. Obviously, doubling your CTR is easier said than done. It's probably not going to happen. But I'm just going to take you through a quick example for what you could do to actually improve it. Um, and before I say anything, I just want you to look at this and just think to yourself, like, what was the first thing you noticed, right? Or which was the first product that you noticed? And before you say anything, I'm willing to bet that it's either this one or that one. And the reason is that these stand out, right? This one's a different color. This is super dark red. It's big in size, so it takes up a decent amount of the white space. And it just doesn't look like the other search results. So these two are pretty bad main images. They look almost similar. They're both white and blue. They're both facing in the same direction. They're both similarly like shaped bottles. Whereas something like this, this is my favorite main image personally. Um, it's bright orange. It has a black spray head. It's facing the opposite direction. It just catches your eye, especially if this one was white. And this was the only orange one. Most of the actual products in the SERP are white. So it's probably just going to turn out like this if you search up this product yourself. But this would completely stand out if everything's white and this is just orange and it's facing the opposite direction. This one just stands out super well. Then you look at the price, the price is fine. You look at the reviews, 113,000. And you know, it just makes sense to click this product. So this product probably has a higher click rate than something like this, which has a worse rating. So this is four and a half stars. This is only four. Um, this one only has 10,000 reviews and the main image is pretty boring. It does have the best stutter badge, but you know, at the same time, this is just a superior product listing. So the best way to improve your click rate is either improve price, improve reviews, these two are the most difficult, 
or you can just come up with better packaging or a better main image design that stands out and takes up more white space to kind of get people's attention more than the other products that are there. Um, another way that we've increased sessions is PR. Uh, this one is kind of complicated, maybe more difficult to implement if you're like a beginner stutter, if you've never tried to do something like this before. But a lot of different sites aggregate this of like Amazon products, like, you know, best Amazon products for like Mother's Day or best Amazon products for pet care or best like organic Amazon products or best vegan Amazon products. And they kind of aggregate these lists and those can drive a lot of traffic and it's free. So you can get on these lists for free if you do some outreach and if you know the right people, maybe if you work with a good PR agency. And this can help increase your branded search volume over time too and create a good stream of just like people coming inbound to find out about you and your products. This is more difficult, but if you can crack it, it really pays off. Uh, another thing you can do is launch new products. So this isn't like, like what I mentioned earlier, where you're just focusing on your top ASINs. This is more just expanding your catalog because sometimes you can just like have a limit for what the market size is or limit for what your market share can be. Like if you already have 35% of the market, getting an extra 5% is going to be super expensive, right? So what you can do instead is just have a cadence for launching ASINs. The best sellers that I work with, the sellers that are selling like 50 million plus per year have a month be like product launch target. Like we're going to launch 20 products a month, 30 products a month. And they just stick to it every single month. And over time, those products start to rank. They start to do well with CP, PPC. They start to get more reviews and those add more and more sessions. So probably the number one way to actually increase your sessions is just to constantly launch new products every single month, every single quarter, you know, every week, if you can keep up that cadence and just be super strict with it and make sure you always have something new coming up. This is probably the best way I've seen to increase sales. It's expensive, especially if you have to do like research and development for each product. But over a year, you can see like they're just launching, you know, they have a concentrate here, then they have a spray bottle, then they used to only have a concentrate for this brand, then they launched like, you know, a bigger concentrate, then they launched like spray bottles for each concentrate. Then you kind of just can expand from their products that you already have. So this is probably one of the, um, better strategies that, that you can implement. It's more expensive and it's more long-term, but it's going to help out a lot. After that, you can try to do some SEO and organic ranking. This is usually what sellers want to do because they think it's free sales after that. But realistically, most big keywords are super competitive right now. And most organic placements have gone and they've been replaced by ads. So this isn't super, um, I guess, effective, especially if you're a smaller setter and you just don't have the budget or the sales volume to hang for bigger keywords. Uh, but you can try inserting keywords into your uh, title, your bullet points, your backend search terms. And you can also set up sponsored product exact match keyword targeting campaigns with high bids and high top of search placement boosts um, for those important keywords that you're trying to rank for. And if you can increase your sales volume and convert while well inserting keywords, you can start to rank and get free sales. But just because of like the way things are moving right now, most sellers only get like 30, 40% of sales from organic. And it's just become super difficult to rank, especially if you're a newer seller. And most other sellers in the category have just been there for years and have accumulated tens of thousands of reviews. So I just be like careful because a lot of sellers are attracted to this option just because they think it's free sales and free revenue and their tackles will go down. It will at some point, but you have to have the budget the product quality and the reviews to actually fill something like this off. Another option that you have is just launching in new countries. I spoke to the head of Amazon advertising of a reasonably sized aggregator and I've actually filmed it and I uploaded it to this channel. You can just go back and find that episode. And I just asked them like what the secret sauce was or what they were implementing that the sellers they bought their brands from weren't doing. And they just said like, say if I'm launching in new marketplaces. So if something's only in Amazon US, I launch it on Walmart. I launch it in Canada, I launch it in Europe, I launch it in the UK, I launch it in Latin America. I just try to expand to as many marketplaces as possible. And if you go to enough marketplaces, you can increase sales by 30, 40% at the same exact ACoS, which if you've been on Amazon for some time, you probably know is very hard. So this is something I definitely recommend. I'd be diligent about it too, because I've met many sellers that launched on Walmart. They just set up like five campaigns and they forgot it just because they were too busy with their US account. So I just be like super diligent about this. I try to launch in a new marketplace every quarter and I just have someone in place, maybe for each marketplace, if you can afford that and just have them solely responsible for the sales from that marketplace and have them do everything. 
including like launching new products, like setting up new campaigns, looking at where the opportunities are and just being super responsible for each marketplace so that you're actually able to drive results. So that's the metric um, that we can improve is CVR. So over here, you just want to improve the percentage of people that convert after like finding our listing. If you just look at the math that I've done here, uh, if you have 4,000 monthly sessions on an ASIN and you convert 10% of them at $20 per product, which will assume is your average order value too, you'll get a total revenue of $8,000. Whereas if you have the same numbers, but you have a 13% conversion rate, your total revenue would be 10,400, which is around like 27% higher. So it's a massive difference. And if your conversion rate is good, you'll start to rank organically because Amazon considers that like as one of its main factors for ranking a product. You have CVR, like sales volume and CVR. So if you improve your CVR, you're going to start to rank better. Um, you'll be more profitable because you need to pay for less clicks to make each sale. So your ACoS will go down and your overall revenue will just go up. So it's super interesting and can be super profitable for you if you're able to pull it off. And pulling it off is difficult. Going from 10 to 13% is hard, but if you are able to pull it off, whether by changing your like listing content, changing your prices, changing the images, whatever else it is, if you're able to pull something like this off, it will be pretty big for your account. So I have a few methods for doing this. Uh, the first one is just increasing or improving reviews. Uh, if you don't have reviews, nothing really works, especially if you've just launched, you probably noticed this with your, um, with your ASINs. So if you're under 20 reviews, your conversion rate is almost always going to be terrible. Um, so you have a few options here. Number one is if you have branded search volume, just focus on branded initially until you accumulate enough reviews to go into generic traffic. That's the first thing. The second thing is you can just drop your prices aggressively. If you're 30, 40% under what everyone else is offering, you're going to get a lot more sales um, than you would have if you're trying to price match and have bad reviews at the same time. Another thing you can do is enroll into Vine. You just give out your product to people for free they leave an honest review and you can collect up to 30 reviews per ASIN. Usually it takes around a month or two to get that many reviews, depending on the category. Uh, you can run your ads at a lot. If you have the budget to run your ads at like a 150% ACoS, that can drive enough sales initially to get your reviews up. And you can turn on review solicitation, which is essentially like an automated tool. We offer one at AI Hello as part of our PPC software that just reaches out to customers like right after they purchase to try to get them to leave your review. Um, these are different options. Obviously, at the end of the day, you just need more sales to get more reviews. You need a good product to get positive reviews. So if you don't have those two things in place, none of this is going to work. But these are some extra things that you can do to kind of get the ball rolling or to improve your, uh, your results by like 10, 15%. After reviews, price is super important for CVR. Uh, so you have this concept called price elasticity of demand, which is like whether the percentage change in price is equal to the percentage change in demand. So if I increase my prices by 10% and demand falls by 50%, then I have a very demand elastic product, right? Because the percentage drop in demand is much bigger than the percentage increase in price. Whereas if I'm able to increase prices 30% and only experience a 15% drop in demand, number one, my margins obviously just got a lot better. And number two, you'll make more money in aggregate. So you have to test what your earnings per click become. Um, after you change your prices and how that affects your ACoS and your margins at the end of the day and kind of see if you can increase CVR by dropping prices or if you can increase prices without dropping CVR that much. This will affect both margins and volume. This is something to definitely test and most others aren't doing this. Uh, another thing you can do is just run coupons. This one's straightforward. People like discounts. Run a few coupons whenever you can uh, and just enjoy the CVR boost, especially if your product is new you don't have many reviews, you're not like that big of a brand, or you have like pretty strong competition and your market share isn't that high, running coupons can get some new to brand customers that can become loyal over time, especially if you sell like a replenishable product like supplements or shampoo. This is something to consider. After that, we have listing optimization, uh, which is essentially playing around with your listing content, including like titles, bullet points, images, A plus content main images, whatever else it is, just like testing that stuff out and figuring out what resonates with the end customer uh, so that you're able to convince, I guess, each visitor better and have them convert at a higher percentage. This can be made into its own video. So I just filmed the podcast episode, which I believe is super comprehensive. And I filmed it with the best guy in this space for listening optimization. So I'm just going to leave a link for it 
in the description of this video and you can just go back and watch it. It covers everything and that should be enough to get you started with your listing optimization journey. Uh, after that, you can also improve your average order value. This one's more difficult, but we also have around four or five strategies that we use to do this. Uh, the first one is launching new variations. So in the example, in the screenshot that I've provided, we have a product that um, is sold in two variations. One is a pack of one and another is a two pack. And the two pack actually ended up outselling the um, one pack. So number one, their margins are better on the two pack. Uh, number two, their average volume or their average order value went up a lot. So instead of like having an average order value of 19 bucks, now it's somewhere around 40 bucks, right? So given the same conversion rate, it's like a very tiny conversion difference considering that it's double the average order value. So given a similar conversion rate and a similar cost per click, their ACOS is a lot better on the two pack and they're making a lot more in sales. So this is something that has worked out very well for this brand and for other brands. If you're selling something like, I don't know, like olive oil, sell bigger bottles, uh, maybe think about if people want to buy in bulk, offer different sizes. All of this can improve your average order value and just help you out with your margins and everything in general. Another thing you can do again is launch new products. If you have a product catalog of just like $20 ASINs and it's just not going that well, you can just launch new higher priced SKUs. Right? So over here you have like a $19 offering, you have a $39 offering, you have a $43 offering, and you have a $79 offering. So the best way to improve your average selling price or your average order value is just to launch more higher priced ASINs, right? And obviously advertise those and have them do well. That's probably my uh, best piece of advice for increasing AOV, along with launching new variations. If you're selling the right type of product, like if you're selling something like jeans, you know, you can't launch bigger size jeans at a higher price, or you can't launch like a five pack of jeans. But if you're in the right category and you're selling the right product, launch new variations. And if you're not, and you can't like launch variations for what you're selling, like let's say you sell a table, um, you can't launch like a five pack of tables. You can just launch more products at the higher average order value and the higher average selling price. So these two are the biggest two things you can do to increase AOV. After that, we have the brand story, which is essentially a carousel that you can include in your A-plus content to showcase your other products. This can provide a minor lift. It's nothing serious, but it's a nice to have anyways, and it costs nothing. Uh, so you might as well just set it up. Set it up, sorry, if you can. Um, so that's just another piece of advice. Then you can also do brand defense. So number one, you can keep competitors off of your product detail pages, which can improve your conversion rate. And at the same time, you can upsell different products. So if you're selling like, I don't know, a vitamin D supplement, uh, maybe the person buying that also wants to buy vitamin B or vitamin C. So if you advertise those ASINs on that listing, they might buy your vitamin D, then go and buy your vitamin C too, which can improve your average order value. That's pretty much it for the three metrics. These are the main strategies that you can use. Pretty much anything um, you can do to grow on Amazon has already been covered in this video. There are other like small tips and tricks like catch-all campaigns for getting more sales at a low cost per click and low ACoS and gold panning campaigns and other things that you can do to give you like minor boosts in sales. But anything that's major and anything that's actually going to like have a double digit impact on total sales has been mentioned already in this video. If you need more help implementing any of this stuff, you can just check us out at aihello.com. Uh, if you book a call with us and you mentioned that you've come from this video, I'll meet with you personally and I can just do a free audit for your account. I'll give you some real tactics that you can implement. And if you want us to help you implement them, we can do that too. And if not, you have actionable tactics that you can start implementing into your own account for free. And then you can just reach out to me anytime at safe at AIHello.com to ask any questions. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys again next week.